in part two, we will examine a little more complex truss. This truss is hanging from a wall. At the top of the truss, on the left-hand side, we have a pin. This constrains the movement of the truss in the y direction and in the x direction. We also have a roller which constrains the motion of the truss in the x direction. We have two external forces applied to the truss. They are both of magnitude 200 pounds in the down direction. The first is at point D and the second is at point E. Using step one of our process, we will first determine the angles that occur at each member of the truss. First, we will find the angle alpha, which occurs right here. We know that for angle alpha, that the vertical height is 30 feet and the horizontal is 40 feet. Therefore, the angle alpha can be determined by noting that the tangent of alpha is equal to 40 feet divided by 30 feet. This results in an angle of 53.13 degrees. We can now find the angle beta by noting that this is a right triangle. Thus, we have the angle occurring here of 90 degrees, the angle alpha, which is known, and the angle beta, which remains unknown. These must all sum to 180 degrees. If we substitute in the known value for angle alpha, we can compute the angle beta, which is 36.87 degrees. Next, we will analyze this triangle of members. Since the tangent of the angle gamma is equal to 30 feet divided by 40 feet, gamma is equal to 36.87 degrees. To find the angle delta, we note that this angle is a right angle and that the sum of the angles must equal 180 degrees. Substituting in our known value for the angle gamma, we find that the angle delta is equal to 53 point one three degrees. Next, we will analyze this triangle. First, we will find zeta. If we note that the tangent of zeta is equal to 30 feet divided by 20 feet, we can determine that the angle zeta is equal to 56.31 degrees. To find the angle epsilon, we note that the triangle is once again a right triangle, thus 90 degrees plus the angle zeta plus the angle epsilon must equal 180 degrees. Substituting in our known values, 90 degrees plus 56.31 degrees plus epsilon equals 180 degrees or epsilon is equal to 33.69 degrees. At this point in the problem, the lengths of two members remain unspecified, the member AD and the member DE. To find the length of the member AD, we note that for this right triangle, the sine of 36.87 degrees is equal to 30 feet divided by the length of that member. Thus, the hypotenuse, or member AD, is equal to 50 feet. To find the length of the member DE, we will use a similar method. In this case, we will use our triangle around the point E. The note that the sine of 56.31 degrees, occurring here, is equal to 30 feet, or the height of the triangle, divided by the length of the hypotenuse. If we then go and substitute in the sine of 56.31 degrees and isolate the length of the hypotenuse, 
which is the length of member DE, we find that it is 36.14 feet. At this point, we have completely specified all the lengths and angles for our truss. The next step, step two, is to create a free body diagram of the truss. At point B, we can have forces applied by the external pin in both the Y and the X direction. We can also, at point A, have a force applied by the rollers in the X direction. The next step, step three, is to find the reaction forces occurring on our truss. If we recall that the moment about a point is equal to the force times the distance and that the sum of the moments around any point must equal zero, we can begin to solve our problem. We have chosen point B as the point around which we will take the moments because these two forces occur through the point B and therefore have no impact on the total moment. To find the reaction force at point AX, we then will substitute in our three external forces. The force LDY multiplied by its distance from point B of 40 feet. The external load force applied at point B in the Y direction of 60 feet and the force RAX, the reactive force, times its distance from the point of 30 feet. All must sum to zero. If we now substitute in the values for our forces, the force LDY is in the down direction, so it is negative, times its distance from point B of 40 feet, can be added to the force LEY, once again in the down direction, so it has a negative value, times the 60 feet distance from the point B, can be added to the force applying at point A due to the reaction force times its distance of 30 feet to equal zero. If we then solve our mathematics and isolate the force RAX, we come to a value of 666.67 pounds force. And again, that is in the x direction. The next step is to find the reaction force occurring at point B in the x direction. Once again, we recall that the sum of the forces in the x directions must be equal to zero. So, the force RAX plus the force RBX must equal zero. Substituting in our known value, for the force RAX, we find that the force RBX is negative 666.67 pounds. Finally, we want to find the reactive force occurring at point B in the Y direction. Once again, we recall that the sum of the forces in the Y direction is equal to zero. So, the force LDY plus the force LEY, plus the reactive force RBY, 